I'm Ryan with Competitive Cyclist, and this is the Ibis Mojo SL. We've been Ibis fans for a long time, so we're happy to introduce their small but focused product line. All of their bikes are now made with carbon fiber from their Hakalugi cyclocross bike and the hardtail mutant, the Tranny, to the Mojo. Our test bike is no exception. The Ibis Mojo SL is the super light version of the already legendary Mojo full suspension bike. And when the Mojo debuted at Interbike in 2005, we were floored by the design. And we weren't alone. The Mojo created a huge buzz throughout the industry. You see, Ibis had been out of order for a number of years as Scott Nickel, the original owner, sold the company in 2000. When the new owners ended up bankrupt a few years later, Ibis seized the opportunity to make a big time comeback and the original Mojo was a big part of their initial success. Like the Mojo, our Mojo SL test bike has a DW link rear suspension, but there are a few key differences that make it about half a pound lighter than its older brother. The first thing that caught my eye is the graceful shape of the frame. The Mojo SL was designed around a few key points in space that were required by the geometry of the frame and the DW Link's pivot locations. The DW Link is designed to give a degree of anti-squat, which is the reaction of the bike and the rear suspension against the rearward transfer of the rider's mass under acceleration. As a result, Ibis's designer, Roxy Lowe, created something that looks muscular and aggressive, yet is also functional and beautiful. The entire frame is made of carbon fiber and that includes the seat post insert, the head tube, and rear dropouts. The pivots use titanium hardware to fix the sealed cartridge bearings and the Mojo SL also has a lightweight bolt-on seat post collar. These small details add up to the 225 gram difference from the Mojo, which is right at about a half a pound. Now, the newest version of the Mojo SL also comes stock with the Lopes Link. That's a stiffer, one-piece bridge version of the two upper links that you would find on the old Mojo. The Lopes link was designed to the exact specifications of Brian Lopes himself, so contrary to reviews you might be reading, the Mojo SL is plenty stiff. It just took one ride for me to know that I made the right choice when I got the Mojo SL for myself. As a part-time single speeder, I pedal a lot while standing, but when I sit back down, I want to be able to keep hammering without getting bucked around on the bike and the Mojo SL lets me do that. The DW Link rear end feels firm when I pedal, even when I set in an ample amount of sag, say 25 to 30%. As I ride up technical hills, I can keep pressure on the pedals and the suspension will continue to work over bumps in the trail, assuring traction on even the steepest pitches. On the way back down, the Mojo's short links and sealed bearings on all the pivots keep the rear end stiff and stable. The DW Link on the Mojo SL has a responsive mid-range and eats roots and rocks while I hammer in the saddle, yet it ramps up for a bottomless feel at the end of the stroke for G-outs or the occasional 3-4 to four foot ledge drop. But it gets better. The Mojo SL is so responsive and so light that it feels like a bike I could race even though it has 140 millimeters of travel on both ends. The smooth and ample travel will help keep my back feeling fresher for short or long events and the firm climbing platform created by the DW Link means I won't get dropped like a bad habit when the trail tilts upward. The Mojo SL is available in sizes small through extra large and it comes in three colors. If you have any questions about the Mojo SL or any of the other IBIS bikes, feel free to call us or send an email to mtb at competitivecyclist.com.